It's a great pleasure to, to I know, we know the better person we thought who would, who would close this and I'm glad that you came here all the way from Washington um, and uh, and for this uh, couple of uh, three or four days with us. Uh, for people who don't, don't know, Richendra has been a champion for energy access uh, and especially uh, very much focused on underserved populations right? around the world, instrumental in starting the whole concept of practitioners group uh, under the UN Foundation and the hope was that practitioners group would be created in other parts of the world because practitioners are always asked to listen to other people and never get a position on the panel to to, to so that they can be heard and she was very instrumental in creating that and, and, and we're very honored to have her today which is your floor. Namaskara. It's, a, it's really a pleasure for me to be here for, for two reasons. As, as, uh, as Harish mentioned, actually, I started working in India almost 20 years ago um, in livelihoods. And uh, at that time, um, I was working in very rural parts of West Bengal and Western Orissa, and Bihar, and not so much in Karnataka, actually. I only visited Karnataka from, from Salvo. Um, and there was a lot that we could do by helping bring financing to entrepreneurs, but at that time we did not have affordable solar energy systems. And so there was only so far that we could go. So we could still help increase incomes. Um, but really it's a pleasure for me today to be here because um, this is the first workshop that I've been to um, that actually combines livelihoods with energy. Um, and I have to say, globally, it's the first workshop that I've been to under the Sustainable Development Goals that combines livelihoods and energy. So really kudos to everybody at Selco, Selco Foundation, uh, the partners that you're working with. Um, and, and I really want to start off as well just by saying thank you to all of the entrepreneurs who have taken time out from your businesses to spend two days here helping us learn and understand what works for you, what helps you with your businesses, what interventions are useful, what do you need, um, and what makes a difference. So one challenge that has come up recently um, in a magazine called The Economist, which uh, many of you know internationally, um, they recently published a piece two months ago um, using one tiny study from Rwanda that said, actually, energy access doesn't really help the poor very much. And many of us were outraged at that. Um, and so I really want to just ask all of you who are entrepreneurs who have benefited from solar, um, if it has helped to increase your income, please can you just raise your hands? Please, please translate that. So thank you very much. And I know a number of you have shared your stories over the last two days, but I just really wanted to prove the point. And for those of us who work in the international arena, um, I just really want to take that message back. Um, academics will say what they will. But we know the truth um, from the lives of, of all of you and the stories that you've been sharing. So um, a few learnings that I've, I've had uh, to take away. Um, uh, and, and really, I, I just want to say also that, that India is very much leading the way in this. Uh, we've got people who are uh, with us uh, who are working in sub-Saharan Africa as well and just starting out uh, looking at Thomas Duvaux, who's starting out work, taking some of these interventions to Nigeria as well. And the, the examples um, and the work that's been done already here by Selco Foundation and its partners on so many different types of livelihood and the way that energy interventions can be an entry point um, is, is really something that we are also still working on in other parts of the world. So thank you to um, India for your leadership in this area as well. Um, another point I, I just want to, to touch upon is um, in the energy access sector, we've at times become very focused on the energy. Um, and one of the things, again, that I'm going to take away from these two days is I've actually heard relatively little about the technology over these last two days. 
In the demonstrations, we've, we've heard about how many watts for the electric sewing machine or for the rice miller. What I've really heard far more about, however, has been, and sorry to all the bankers, about financing. Um, some of the financing challenges, but also the opportunities. So what are the needs of consumers? What kinds of financing actually help them with getting the innovations that they need? I've heard about innovation. I've heard about innovation, and we tend to talk about end users, but actually end users are the starting point. They are the innovators. And we've heard so much over the last two days about them being leaders in terms of the innovations, and then the rest of us learning from them, and then helping to take those learnings into other communities as well. I've also learned about the training that's required as well. And again, it's training on both sides. Uh, we had the speaker who started out this morning focusing really on vocational training and retraining. But there's also training of those of us who are trying to support people in communities about what their needs are. It's a two-way street. We can train on business planning, but we get trained on what is actually happening in the agricultural supply chain or the value chain. Gauri Singh earlier was talking about the evidence that's needed for scaling. And again, I think we've, we've already amassed here a, a terrific body of evidence that uh, can be taken back into the, the national setting, but also back into the international setting, as I mentioned earlier, where sometimes people get too abstract um, and really don't focus on the impact that it's having on people's lives and their livelihoods. Um, Beyond all of that, beyond the ecosystem of services that's required, where energy may be one intervention, but it's not the only intervention, it's really a network of interventions. I also just want to really focus a little bit on the fact that we focus on um, the workshop being called SDG 7 for SDG 8. And, and I hope, I, I missed the morning session yesterday morning, so I hope that SDG 7 and SDG 8 were explained. Um, that it really is is the focus on energy solutions um, for for livelihoods, but decent work and also for economic growth. What I've heard over the last two days, however, is that it's not only SDG seven and SDG eight. So I've heard that it's there's been a focus on SDG one, which is really helping people increase their incomes. Um, in fact, we've heard from some entrepreneurs that they've more than doubled their incomes as a result of the solar uh, system that they've been able to utilize. We've heard about SDG 3. Again, we had um, agriculture is health this morning, which I've never heard before. We also heard that um, having a solar sewing machine allowed one entrepreneur to have less knee pain. So there's an immediate health benefit from having a solar intervention as well. We've heard quite a lot about gender equality. And I recall from uh, Shirama's um, uh, speech this morning about her solar milling and how proud she was that in fact she was also earning the income for her family. And that gives women dignity. We've also heard about SDG 10, energy and infrastructure and industry, and how we need energy. <laughs> and, how, and how it supports small industries and indeed, how that small industry support actually helps people return back from the cities to have a sustainable livelihood in rural areas as well, and how important that is. Although we haven't really been talking about it, we've also heard about SDG 13, a lot of focus on climate action. It's building resilience for communities that are vulnerable. And as we face and, and tackle the challenge of climate change around the world, that kind of resiliency that helps people develop sustainable livelihoods where they are is going to become more and more important, uh, not only in India, but in other parts of the world as well. And I'm going to finish as well on SDG 17, which is really key. Um, and this is something that Jeff mentioned yesterday in his closing remarks at the end of the day which is that it's partnerships, it's about partnerships. And if there's one thing I've seen through the last two days, it's really about building strong partnerships with the end users, with the financial sector, whether it's bankers or microfinance institutions or others. It's about building partnerships with the communities that you're working in. Don't go in there knowing the solutions, go in there to listen and learn 
and then together focus on the innovations and the solutions. And it's about partnerships both at the local level, at the national level, and at the international level. It's not about numbers. Sometimes we talk about, you know, uh, over a billion people needing energy access, and it sounds like an equation. It sounds like E equals MT squared or something. It's really about people, and it starts and ends with people. And livelihoods um, and building income and helping people have a better quality of life is really uh, what I'm taking away from this. So thank you all for helping me to learn. And uh, together, I hope we can still grow and grow the sector further. Thank you very much. And Bandana Bali. What do I say we can the ask for a better ending? Thank you, Rachenda. My colleague will uh, present her with the seminar. Just some uh, final announcements uh, before concluding. Um, kindly give um, your boarding pass. Uh, this is to all the speakers and uh, the partners to whom our uh, team had done the travel arrangements. Um, kindly give your boarding pass back to the registration desk. Uh, also to everyone, deposit your name tags back to the registration desk because we would use it for the next event. Uh, if there are any problems, ideas, suggestions, feedback, kindly write to us. We would love to hear from you. Uh, also, you all have been a great audience. Uh, we hope that the conference has inspired champions so that there's more scaling, replication of sustainable solutions in a decentralized manner. That's making this world a little more uh, equitable. Thank you. Thank you so much. Also, um, all the people, uh, yeah, kindly give back your headphones uh, to the registration.